Ah, Sweden, the Scandinavian home of both Dolph Lundgren and design law and equipment brand Husqvarna. And that's how I'm going to pronounce it in today's video, and you better just deal with it. But did you know, while being long separated from the chainsaw division, Husqvarna is actually one of the oldest motorcycle companies in the world? They've been far more prevalent in off-road riding for most of their tenure, but have been gradually re-entering the street bike segment with their Supermoto and Scrambler style motorcycles. The Husqvarna name may be hard to pronounce, but their motorcycles are pretty easy to love. With their off-road heritage being combined with sleek and modern design, Husqvarna's street bikes tend to look unlike anything else on the road, despite sharing many components pulled from their Austrian counterpart, KTM. Read pretty much all the components. So without further ado, let's do a deep dive on Husqvarna motorcycles and find out once and for all whether I'm pronouncing that correctly or not. Today's video is proudly sponsored by our friends at ASV Inventions who are making some of the best motorcycle levers in the game right now. I'll tell you more about them later in the video. Not unlike so many motorcycle companies that originally existed as weapons manufacturers, Husqvarna was originally a state-owned producer of rifles and muskets for the Swedish military, dating as far back as the late 1600s. The Husqvarna logo actually still resembles the outline of rifle sights, paying homage to their legacy. It wasn't until the late 19th century, specifically in 1887, that Husqvarna diversified into their product lines like chainsaws, weed whackers, and zero-turn lawnmowers. Just kidding, that technology obviously did not exist yet, so it was probably like patented manure shovels and horse whips or something. Ow! The first step towards motorcycle production came in 1903 when Husqvarna, Husqvarna produced its first bicycle. This move into bicycles laid the groundwork for the company's venture into motorized vehicles. The significant development occurred in the early 20th century, around 1903, when Husqvarna started experimenting with motorized machines. They began producing small engines and by 1907 had built their first motorcycle prototype. These early motorcycles were simple and often fitted with engines that were outsourced from other manufacturers as Husqvarna was still refining its own engine designs. The first engine Husky had designed entirely in-house was finalized in 1920. It was a 550cc four-stroke V-twin similar to the engines used by Harley-Davidson and Indian at the time. During the 1930s, Husqvarna competed in Grand Prix motorcycle racing. They had success early on in Swedish GP using a V-twin motorcycle platform. They beat Norton in Swedish GP in 19. 1931 and secured podium positions in the following years in different Isle of Man classes. One of the notable achievements for Husky's early road racing happened during the time of Isle of Man. In the 1933 Isle of Man TT, the Swedish rider Ragnar Sundv Sundvqvist, y'all can deal with that one, Ra Ragnar Sundkvist. There we go. He secured a victory riding a Husqvarna motorcycle in the lightweight 250cc class. This victory was a significant milestone for Husqvarna and brought international recognition to the brand. In 1935, the company withdrew racing support, although some Husqvarna motorcycles were still raced privately. In the following decades, Husqvarna made significant strides in off-road motorcycle racing, which would become synonymous with their motorcycles. The brand became renowned for its success in motocross and enduro events, especially during the 1950s through the 1970s. Husqvarna's off-road dominance played a crucial role in elevating the brand's reputation and popularity worldwide. Husqvarna achieved a historic milestone in the motocross world when Bill Nilsson won the 500cc motocross world championship in 1959. This victory was notable as it marked the first time a four-stroke motorcycle had won a world championship in that sport. Husqvarna is a company whose legacy in off-road racing has ultimately led to the development of some fascinating street bikes as well, which is not unlike the story of ASV Inventions, the sponsor of today's video. We're super excited to have partnered with ASV, who makes some of the best levers for both dirt bikes and street bikes. ASV has been in the business since 2001 and since then have sold millions of levers to every type of rider. They are a rider-owned company who've prioritized improved functionality and longevity in their levers. They are the only lever to be referred to as unbreakable as they believe levers shouldn't be disposable wear items, no matter how hard you send it on the motocross track, racetrack, or the highway on-ramp. Because, come on, I know we've got some squids in the audience. ASV levers are all built in Huntington Beach, California, and since they stand by their word, they've got an incredible warranty program. 
Since Unbreakable is kind of their deal, if you break it, they replace it. Regardless of how it happens, send them photos of your broken levers along with proof of purchase and they will replace them free of charge. They've got a massive catalog of levers for dirt bikes, street bikes, and even quads. Those are a little bit cursed, but that's okay, with compatibility going back all the way to 1985. So no matter what type of bike you ride, follow the link in the description below and find a new set of levers from ASV. It'll be the last pair you ever need. Use the link below and use the code YAMMY to receive 15% off of your order. Thanks so much to ASV for the support on the channel. We are super excited to be working together. Again, use that link in the description and use the code YAMMY for 15% off. Now let's get back to the video. During the 1960s and 70s, Husqvarna enjoyed unparalleled success in motocross. Legendary riders like Torsten Hallman and Banked Aberg rode Husqvarna motorcycles to multiple victories in prestigious motocross events, including the FIM 500cc Motocross World Championship. Husqvarna's innovative engineering and lightweight designs contributed to their dominance during this period. Husky was pivotal in the shaping of the culture of motocross racing around the world. Their success in sport was a direct contributor to their sustained prevalence throughout the years. In the late 1980s, Husqvarna achieved continued success in the FIM Enduro World Championship. Riders like Anders Ericsson and Peter Gustafsson brought home titles for Husqvarna, cementing the brand's legacy in enduro racing. Also, I feel like those are the most Swedish names ever. I think in my younger days, I literally had pieces of Ikea furniture named the Ericsson and the Gustafsson. Husqvarna wasn't just successful in motocross though, but other disciplines of off-road racing as well, including enduro, rally, and supermoto, where they've been awarded dozens of world championship titles. While Husqvarna was proven to be a formidable contender in off-road racing during the latter half of the 20th century, the company actually changed multiple times and has continued to do so up until the mid-2010s. Prior to 1978, Husqvarna motorcycles had been controlled by the Greater Husqvarna Company, you know, the one that makes chainsaws. The company that comes up when you search Husqvarna dealers near me and see deals on lawnmowers down at the Tractor Supply Co. Well, in 1978, that entire company was bought by Electrolux, a Swedish Swedish appliance company, who sold the motorcycle division off to Kajiva in 1987. If you're at all familiar with global motorcycle manufacturing history, you'll recognize Kajiva as the Italian motorcycle conglomerate who had manufactured everything from Ducatis, Harley-Davidsons, and MV Agustas in the late 20th century. Production of Husqvarna motorcycles was moved to Italy, which made way for the brand offshoot known as the Husaberg. Husaberg was a motorcycle company comprised of former Husqvarna employees who stayed in Sweden following Husky's purchase by Kajiva. And what could have been a short-lived blip in Husky's history, Husaberg ended up having a a lasting impact on the Husqvarna legacy. Husaberg gained recognitions for its focus on producing enduro and off-road motorcycles with advanced engineering and design features. The brand became known for pushing the boundaries of off-road motorcycle technology, particularly in areas like frame design, engine layout, and weight distribution. Their motorcycles featured lightweight, powerful engines and chassis that provided excellent handling and performance in demanding off-road conditions. The first Husaberg motorcycle, the 501 FE, an early predecessor to my own Husqvarna Varna FE 501 was introduced in 1989 and received widespread acclaim for its innovative design and performance capabilities. The company continued to release a range of successful models throughout the years, competing in various off-road racing disciplines. In 1995, Husaberg became part of the KTM group, which allowed them to share resources and technology with KTM. Under KTM's ownership, Husaberg continued to develop and improve their motorcycles. Many of the innovative technologies and design principles that Husaberg introduced were subsequently integrated into KTM's off-road motorcycle lineup. Interestingly, KTM's ready-to-race slogan was actually the slogan of Husaberg before it was adopted by KTM. Husqvarna was purchased from Kajiva by BMW in 2007, where they briefly owned the company until 2013. Then, Husky was bought by KTM, where the Husqvarna, KTM, and Husaberg synergy was able to live on. Since Husqvarna and KTM were now in cahoots, there was no need for Husaberg to exist any longer, and production was ceased in 2013. Now, before we talk about modern Husqvarna motorcycles, let's look at one of their most esteemed bikes that made them such a recognizable brand. One of Husqvarna's most historically significant street motorcycles was the Silver Pillin, which translates to Silver Arrow, a name which would ultimately be distilled down into their modern street bikes like the Svart Pillin and Vit Pillin, which means Black Arrow and White Arrow, respectively. This was a 175cc two-stroke street motorcycle that gained popularity in the 1950s and is recognized for its stylish design and excellent performance. One of the most championship-winning off-road motorcycles of the 1960s was the Husqvarna 250 Cross. This model 
model is arguably one of the most famous motorcycles ever produced by Husqvarna. It played a significant role in establishing their reputation in motocross racing. The 250 Cross was known for its lightweight design, strong power delivery, and exceptional handling characteristics. Steve McQueen was known to have a love affair with this motorcycle where it was ridden in the famous motorcycle documentary on any Sunday. In the late 1960s, the Cross was built up to a 400cc model, which allowed Husqvarna to stay competitive in off-road racing. In the 1990s, Husky began building enduro bikes like the TE610. The Husqvarna TE610 was part of Husqvarna's TE or Touring Enduro series, which aimed to offer versatile motorcycles capable of handling both on-road and off-road riding conditions. It originally had a 576cc single that was really powerful and torquey for off-road riding or street riding. This bike was an early example of exemplary European dual sport motorcycles. So what's going on with Husky today? Well, they've always been reputable in the off-road world, and they've always been pretty enigmatic in the street bike category beyond enduro-style motorcycles, while only producing a handful of street-biased motorcycles in their tenure. While under BMW control, they produced the Nuda 900R for the 2011 and 2012 model year. The Nuda was an interesting bike that used a beefed up and modified version of the BMW F800 engine. Much of the frame and chassis components came from existing BMW tech as well, but the Nuda was designed as sort of a motard style bike taking a lot of design cues from Husqvarna supermotos. Since being purchased by KTM in 2013, Husqvarna has been able to share components in engineering and has since established more of a presence in the street bike world. In 2014, prototypes for these Fartpillin 401 and Vitpillin 401 motorcycles were debuted, though they were not released to the public alongside the Vitpillin 701 until 2018. These bikes were Husqvarna's purposeful re-entry into the street bike world and have since left a lasting impact. I mean, if you've been around on the channel before, you know we've been praising these Vartpillin 401 as one of the best all-around beginner bikes for years now. Kind of still waiting on my checks from Husqvarna because we've definitely sold a lot of Svartpillins. These Vartpillin and Vitpillin are two versions of the same platform. These Vartpillin being an edgy neo-retro urban scrambler equipped with knobby tires, spoked wheels, and a wide flat handlebar. The Vitpillin is more of a futuristic cafe racer with low slung bars, street bias tires, and alloy wheels. Each bike is powered by a 373cc single cylinder engine pulled from the KTM Duke 390 that makes 44 horsepower and 27 foot pounds of torque. These small displacement bikes from both Husky and KTM are always packed with high quality components like WP suspension and Bipre brakes. These are just cool overall bikes that are just fun to ride and have a ton of look back factor. Husky still produces plenty of dirt bikes, but because I know my audience, I'm going to stick with the street legal models. Husky has three different street legal enduro bikes. The smaller two are the FE350S and the FE501S, the latter of which I personally own. These are some of the best dual sport bikes you can buy and they are a ton of fun to ride. Yeah, they're more expensive than a Japanese dual sport, but they are so powerful and lightweight and confidence inspiring in a way that most Japanese dual sports are just not, especially when asked to do anything remotely rigorous off-road. Husky also sells the 701 in both enduro and supermoto trim. These bikes make 74 horsepower and 54 foot-pounds of torque and have a dry weight of less than 325 pounds. They've got Brembo brakes, WP suspension, rider aids, and switchable ABS. The enduro is of course tailored for off-road riding and the supermoto is for street, so the wheel, tire, and suspension setups reflect all of that. One of the newer additions to Husky's street legal lineup is the Norden 901. The Norden is a sort of redressed version of the KTM Duke 890 Adventure. The Norden 901 makes 105 horsepower and 74 foot-pounds of torque from its 889cc parallel twin engine. This bike has all the features you'd expect from a modern adventure bike like ride modes, switchable off-road ABS, a quick shifter, and a TFT dash. The Norden is a bit more of a plus ride on the pavement due to the road bias WP Apex suspension compared to the dirt orientated suspension on the 890 Adventure. Which is kind of ironic considering Husqvarna has been so dirt focused for the last hundred years, but hey, I'm sure the executives in the boardroom know what they're up to. Husqvarna still has a huge presence in competitive off-road motorcycling and their lineup of motorcycles still reflects that heritage. Since 2023, Husky is actually sponsored by the Liqui Mali Intact GP team in the Moto2 Championship. Although the season wasn't particularly 
fruitful, it is interesting to see Husky involved in road racing. I'm kinda still getting my fingers crossed we're gonna see a Husky team in GP, just cause I wanna see that all white and fluo yellow livery. Although their model lineup is still predominantly off-road focused, with the added resources that have come from being partnered with KTM, I'm excited to see how Husqvarna will continue to impact the street bike market. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. What do you think of Husqvarna? Are they the cream of the crop for enduro style motorcycles, or are they overpriced and overdesigned bikes from Euro snobs? Huge shout out to ASV for sponsoring this video. We're super excited to have them as a partner on the channel and have some fun things with them in the works, so be sure to stay tuned for that. I'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Fact, Sweden has the highest number of McDonald's restaurants per capita. Simmer on that one. Goodbye. Keep watching. Watch, 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 watch.